is this theme park planet? Sierra Point stands as the roller coaster capital of the world, but how did it become this way? Let's go back to when the park first opened in 1870, and we have Theme Park Avenue to explain what happened when it first opened. Cedar Point is currently the roller coaster capital of the world, but this spectacular theme park resort has much more humble beginnings. In the late 19th century, the Cedar Point Peninsula was a hotspot for fishing, and it received its name due to the abundance of cedar trees growing there. Due to Sandusky's shipping port and railroads, the area's economy boomed. People traveled by steamboat and railroad, and they would stop at Cedar Point. The booming travel to the peninsula led to the creation of multiple bathhouses near the beach. Sailboats began docking on the shore to enjoy these bathhouses, and the amusement park began forming in 1888, when a grand pavilion with a concert hall and a bowling alley was constructed. Two years later, the rides began making their entrance. The first ride was a water toboggan ride that launched riders into Lake Erie. The first roller coaster arrived at the park in 1892 and was known as Switchback Railway. Its 25 foot height and 10 mile per hour top speed were staggering at the time. And the ride was the start of Cedar Point's now unrivaled roller coaster collection. In 1897, a change in ownership signaled a change in the park. The Lake Erie and Western Railroad purchased the peninsula for the equivalent of $8 million and created the Cedar Point Pleasure Resort Company. In 1902, Cedar Point opened its second roller coaster, the Figure 8 Roller Toboggan. While this name might not be very exciting to some, remember that this is the same park that would go on to name a ride Rougarou. To further prove Cedar Point as a resort, the famous Hotel Breakers opened in 1905 and it is providing guests with an unforgettable Cedar Point experience to this day. The hotel had 600 guest rooms and was part of the beginning of the modern Cedar Point. Who would have thought that the park would still be operating and satisfying guests 150 years after its beginning? Just 115 years ago, the park had two roller coasters and one hotel. The 1910 to 1940 era started off with a bang when in 1910, Glen H. Curtis established a new record for flying over water when he completed a 65 mile long flight that began on Euclid Beach and finished on the Cedar Point Beach. Following that, in 1911 to 1914, Cedar Point built the Chasse. This was the first roadway that led to the peninsula. Before that, people got to Cedar Point on ferry or boat, similar to how people get to Putin Bay and Kelly's Island today. In 1915, the White House Hotel was remodeled and renamed the Cedars, and the Bayshore Hotel was moved and served as employee housing during the winter. In 1920, the current Cleveland Road entrance to the Chasse opened, and fast forward another five years to 1925, Helen Keller spoke at the park's convention center during the annual convention of Lions International. You can see a sign about her over by Windseeker, where the convention center is located. In 1929, the cycling roller coaster opened along the beach. It was built as scientifically built for speed, thrills, and safety. 1929 also marked the beginning of the Great Depression. In 1933, the Motor Dome and Venetian Swing rides were added to Cedar Point, as well as a circus sideshow along the Midway. In 1934, the Tumblebug ride opened and the High Frolic roller coaster was built on the former Leapfrog ride structure. In the mid 30s, the Leap, the Leap the Dips coaster was removed due to mechanical issues. Let's fast forward to 1939, when the Coliseum got rid of its dance floor and skating rink and was converted into a ballroom. Although it sounds pretty lame, this ballroom hosted lots of top name big bands of the time to perform. Lastly, in 1940, Hotel Breakers was renovated to have some work done on the rotunda in the lounge. Alright, thanks so much for the help everyone. So let's move down the timeline. So in the 40s, there was really nothing that happened. This was like a dead decade from Sierra Point. The only thing that happened was in 1946 when the Midway car Carousel makes its way into the park. Surprisingly, this carousel is still at the park to this day and is standing as the oldest ride at the park. Now in the 50s, things started picking up speed. In 1957, a group of investors acquired ownership of Sierra Point. 
and the Sierra Point Causeway, which is how we get to Sierra Point to this day, is opened. In 1959, construction is finished on the Sierra Point Marina. And fun fact, this was one of the largest standing on the Great Lakes. In 1960, Cadillac Cars and Tiki Twirl opens. Tiki Twirl is still at the park to this day. In 1961, Skyride and Star Voyager open. Skyride is still standing at the park to this day and going over the midway. In 1962, Skywheel opens. Giant Skywheel. This was actually a very, very interesting ride to like read about. It was a double-wheeled Ferris wheel, so like one bottom of the Ferris wheel will be suspended in the air while the other one's on the ground loading and all that. It's, it, it sounded like a really cool concept. Okay, well, then there you go. That's what it was. In 1963, Sierra Point and Lake Erie Railroad opens. The iconic train ride is still at the park to this day. Also same year, Mill Race opens. Now, in 1964, Sierra Point had something big they wanted to reveal this year. They came out with Blue Shriek. This fast wooden coaster from Philadelphia Toboggan Company was huge at the time. This iconic roller coaster is still at the park to this day and is still as fun as it was in 1964. And fun fact, this coaster is Sierra Point's oldest standing roller coaster and yet it's still a decent ride. Alright, in 1965, Sierra Point was on a roll and, ha and opened Earthquake. Uh, Earthquake was a dark ride based on san francisco's earthquake which actually sounds really really interesting all right all right let's just move on to the next year which was 1966 pirate ride was open i don't know much about this ride other than well it was themed after pirates in 1967 sierra downs opened this is still a ride at the park to this day if you want to ride it same year a ride called rotor opens rotor is like one of those spinning rides where you're pinned to the wall because of the centrifugal force and the uh, floor drops below you, but you're still there because of that centrifugal force, which is actually a really cool ride. I wish I have been on one of those, but you know, I haven't yet. In 1968, Sierra Point's Frontier Town opens. Now, 1969, Sierra Creek Mine Ride, which is still open to this day, opens. Sierra Creek Mine Ride is an aero mine train ride. This coaster goes through its layout and turns in a snappy manner. Sierra Creek Mine Ride opens as a great family coaster. In 1970, this was Sierra Point's centennial year. This year came along with new rides such as the new Wildcat. Also, in the same year, Dodge M Number no. 2 came out and Calypso. Centennial Theater, now known as the Jack Aldrich Theater, opened in this same year. Kitty Land, now known as Kitty Kingdom, opened with 14 Kitty Rides, also in the same year. Also, Sealand, an area where people could see sharks, penguins, pretty much a aquatic zoo, just probably really simplified. The aquarium was removed in 2001 to make way for Wicked Twister, but more about that later. In 1971, the Trabant opens. Also in the same year, a campground opens with log cabins and 224 campsites for RVs. Now in 1972, Sierra Point had something big coming. The Frontier Carousel. No, no, I'm just joking, but the big wheel opened at the park. This Ferris wheel still stands at the park to this day, right by the former Wicked Twist area and Gatekeeper. Also, Matterhorn opens. Okay, okay, fine. I'll say the really big thing. Jumbo Jet opens. So this closed the same year as Wildcat also closed, and this was also built by Schwarzkopf, and it's their Jumbo Jet model. And fun fact, this was actually one of the first roller coasters either in the world or in America, I'm guessing the world, that had a spiral lift tail. So that must have definitely been a spectacle back then. So yeah, it's definitely your usual, uh, j you know, jumbo jet, short scoff model, steel track, all that kind of stuff. And fun fact, this is actually still operating today and it's located in Belarus right now. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the park that it's in because uh, I, I can't read that. All right, for the next three years, nothing major happened. But in 1975, the Sierra Point Cinema was opened with IMAX projection system. This cinema was massive with 19,000 square feet and the area was divided with two things. The main theater and the showcase area. Fun fact, this cinema had one of the largest motion screens to ever exist being as big as 66 feet high by 88 feet wide. In 1976, the corkscrew was introduced. 
This coaster manufactured by Aerodynamics went upside down not once, not twice, but three times, which was staggering at the time. Corkscrew is still at the park to this day if you want to ride it. In 1977, the Witch's Wheel opens. Now, 1978 was a big year for Cedar Point. They opened the tallest, fastest roller coaster in the world. Well, for like two weeks. The Gemini opened. Gemini is an aerodynamics racing coaster, which is still operating to this day. Yes, blue side always wins. This iconic attraction is located by Camp Snoopy. And speaking of Camp Snoopy and Gemini, in 1979, Junior Gemini opened at Camp Snoopy. Junior Gemini was manufactured by Intamin Amusement Rides and was actually their first roller coaster ever. Junior Gemini is now called Wilderness Run and is still operating to this day in Camp Snoopy. But just think for a second, Intamin made this fun kitty coaster, but then only 20 years later, they go to make the world's first giga coaster. But more on that later. In 1980, Oceana, a 1,600-seat Dolphin Stadium opened. In 1981, Ocean Motion opens, which is still at the park to this day. In 1982, Whitewater Landing opens. This amazing water attracted stayed open till 2005. In 1983, Demon Drop, one of Sierra Point's well-known coasters, opens at the park. And fun fact, this ride is still in operation at Dorney Park. In 1985, Avalanche Run opens at the park. This bobsled coaster was great at the time, until a few things happened and it ended up go not going as expected. Sand would keep going on the slide, making it be down for maintenance constantly. Then Sierra Point came in and put a big metal box around it to protect it. And from what the building looked like, they called the ride Disaster Transport. Okay, now in 1986, Zero Point decided to make Thunder Canyon, which is still at the park. This ride featured many areas where you would get wet if you were lucky, and was and is a great water ride to this day. In 1987, Iron Dragon was built. Iron Dragon is an aerodynamic suspended coaster, which means it will hang riders below its track, and when it turns, it will give the riders a more thrilling turn, with rotating either left or right depending on the turn it goes on. In 1988, Soak City Water Park opens, and this was just a filling for what Cedar Point was, had planned for the 1989 season. In 1989, the world's first hyper coaster made by aerodynamics opened up the park. This huge 200 foot tall roller coaster was huge at the time and is today in standards. This coaster has it all from the slowest lift hill on planet Earth to its thrilling drop. This ride came in hot and beat so many records when it first came out. Magnum XL200 was the start of Sierra Point's world record breaking coaster lineup we have today. Magnum, Magnum is of course still at the park today and I highly recommend you to ride it next time you go. It is one of my personal favorites. Alright, enough of me talking, let's get someone else going, and I have Hershey Park enthusiasts to take it from here. The 1990s to the mid 2010s at Cedar Point were some of the most important and influential years in the entire park's legacy. Many records were broken, many new rides were introduced, and without all of these records and rides being broken, we might not have some of the coasters we know and love today. Even from the start, Cedar Point was miles ahead of any other amusement park, and they still continued to be one of, if not the leading amusement park in the entire world. And a lot of it can be attributed to the 1990s to the mid 2010s, starting in 1990. The 90s was a decade of crazy music, crazy haircuts, and a bunch of other crazy stuff. And Cedar Point started this amazing decade in kind of a small way by building a giant suite of hotels named Sandcastle Suites. This was a very nice property and it opened up with 96 original suites but then had an additional 91 added in two years prior, so in 1992. Now the next year was even bigger for Cedar Point. How tall could it be? It's fast. It's the tallest, hugest, largest mammoth. How tall could it be? 
On May 11, 1991, Mean Streak, the tallest and fastest wooden coaster on planet Earth, debuted in Frontier Town of Cedar Point. With a height of 161 feet and a drop of 155 feet, this thing opened to rave reviews. Manufactured by Din Corporation and costing the park a whopping $7.5 million, this thing utilized a total of 1.7 million feet of board lumber. Cedar Point went all out on Mean Streak. The ride utilized a bunch of unbanked and banked turns and gave riders a very fun experience, however, it did not age well. Cedar Point had gone all out on Mean Streak, which both hurt them and helped them later down the line. It wasn't until about three years later until guests started complaining that the ride had become almost unbearably rough. Because Mean Streak was such a new addition, Cedar Point knew that they had to keep it running good and well, so they kept on retracking it almost every year. They hired Din Corporation and even had their own special company to retrack it. Many trim breaks were added along the structure, including on the drop and some of the turnarounds. However, because of this feature, a lot of guests complained about it being too slow or not being fun, and thus it received some of the shortest lines throughout the park. While Mean Streak opened up as a wooden beast, it definitely had a mean streak and a mean side to it that hurt Cedar Point but ultimately helped them. While Cedar Point was thinking that they were fighting a losing battle, constantly trying to maintain this wooden monstrosity, little did they know, 25 years later, this ride would become an icon for Cedar Point, but not in the same form. However, from the late 90s until the mid 2010s, this ride stood over Cedar Point's skyline as a sad token of failure for Cedar Point. However, it helps them move forward. Because of Cedar Point's massive success and overall amazing overarching legacy, many parks now take after Cedar Point. And without this ultimately failed roller coaster, Great Coaster International, the leading company in wooden roller coasters today, might not have even existed. It takes sometimes another manufacturer's failure in order to emerge a new manufacturer's success. If Din Corporation had kept manufacturing the same old wooden coasters and they were good, people would have gone with them as opposed to Great Coasters International, meaning many Great Coasters International coasters such as Mystic Timbers at King's Island would cease to exist. And Mean Streak also helped a new line of roller coasters, the hybrid roller coasters, really start to make an impact, and that will come in later. The next year, Cedar Point took a little bit of a down year and opened a small go-kart track in a place called Challenge Park. The next year, though, was a little bit different. Snake River Falls, the world's tallest log plume, opened at the park. Standing at a height of 82 feet and manufactured by the legendary Aerodynamics, this ride was not a tame one. This Shoot the Shoots water ride was the ultimate way to get splashed at Cedar Point. But the next year, in 1994, Cedar Point was about to do something crazy. Cedar Point. The year was 1994 as Cedar Point unveiled Raptor. Raptor truly ruled the sky as it was one of the best B&M inverted coasters at its time and still now currently. Raptor truly did rule the sky as it unveiled at the front of the park right next to the classic Blue Streak roller coaster. Raptor was manufactured by Swiss manufacturer Bolliger and Maviard, otherwise known as B&M, and featured a height of approximately 137 feet, a drop of 119 feet, 57 miles per hour as its top speed, and approximately 3,000 1,790 feet of track length. This ride also blazed through six incredible inversions. Its bright green track absolutely stunned guests of the park, and it was a fan favorite for many years and still is today. And while it might not be the most historically significant coaster in all of Cedar Point, it added so much to Cedar Point's ride collection in the mid-90s. Raptor truly did so much for Cedar Point, and it's still a fan favorite today and ranks very highly in many coaster enthusiasts' list of Cedar Point rankings. Not much was seen in the next year from Cedar Point, except for some minor additions to Hotel Breakers, but the next year, Cedar Point would unveil another Bolger and Mabiot roller coaster in the form of Mantis. Mantis. Step on this one, and you'll find out. The highest, fastest, steepest stand-up roller coaster in the world. How much can you stand? 
Mantis was a stand-up roller coaster by Baldur and Mabillard, and it debuted right next to Iron Dragon. This ride was also loved by many visitors of Cedar Point, but not quite as much as Raptor, as the ride featured you standing up, which was an uncomfortable position for many visitors. However, many people did praise the amazing amount of fast-paced inversions and the overall fun factor of this ride. However, 19 years later, it was converted to the sit-down coaster we know today as Rougarou. Cedar Point is such an amazing amusement park that seems almost flawless on paper. However, there are some speed bumps along the way, Mantis being one of them. However, it did lead to the eventual rise of Rougarou in 2015, which was a great addition for Cedar Point and did very well amongst the general public. Sometimes when things don't do as well as initially perceived, it gives birth to something even better. That's what Cedar Point has done throughout their entire history. Mean Streak was converted into Steel Vengeance, which many coaster enthusiasts praise to be the best roller coaster in the world. And that's because Cedar Point is not afraid to take risks. They want to go all out, so if a ride fails, they can just do something even better with it and transform it into something amazing. And that's truly a huge factor in Cedar Point's unique and amazing legacy. The next ride came in 1998 with Cedar Point's iconic Power Tower. The power tower shot riders either up or down 240 feet and reached speeds of 50 miles an hour. This ride was a huge hit with the general public as you could choose a side and a different thrill level based off of each side that either shot you up or down. Manufactured by SNS, this popular Cedar Point ride uses air compressed in large cylinders and pistons to shoot you up or down. Riders to this day enjoy being rocketed up or rocketed down this amazing Cedar Point attraction. Power Tower truly is an iconic Cedar Point ride and many guests as soon as they go to Cedar Point run to this attraction and make it a must do on their Cedar Point agenda. The next year in 1999 was a year of mild park improvement. Cedar Point took the time to add Planet Stupid to the park, a fun section for kids of Cedar Point, and made some other mild park improvements as well as some hotel breakers improvements. However, guests of Cedar Point could not possibly anticipate what was coming at the turn of the millennia. The world's first ever Giga Roller Coaster, Millennium Force, debuted at the park in the year 2000. In years past, Cedar Point had taken it upon themselves to deliver guests record-breaking rides, crazy attractions for the park, but even Magnum XL200 could not even come close to how crazy Millennium Force was. If Cedar Point was not already on the map, this was the ride that did it. Riders would ascend a cable lift hill and reach a top height of 310 feet while overlooking Lake Erie to their left. Plunging down the drop, riders would then experience many crossover overbank turns, airtime hills, and many other fun elements. Reaching a speed of approximately 93 miles per hour and breaking the 6,500 foot track length barrier, this ride was a monstrosity. Millennium Force opened to absolutely rave reviews and continues to do so even to this day, winning many golden ticket awards for best steel coaster of the year back-to-back -back years. The coaster wars were in full swing. Parks around the world were trying to outbeat each other with the new tallest, fastest roller coaster, but Millennium Force absolutely crushed all the previous records. Opening the same year was Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land, which took the record from Millennium Force for being the longest and tallest coaster in the world. However, Millennium Force did open first. While Steel Dragon is 318 feet tall, Millennium Force did open first, so it is still the first true Giga Coaster. And it really just brought a new life to Cedar Point. Being located right next to Mantis, right next to Iron Dragon, it really revived that section of the park. Featuring iconic station music, beautiful views, and so much much more, Millennium Force just showed the world that Cedar Point was all about going big or going home. And the ride being manufactured by Intamin Amusement Rides was unfortunately prone to some downtime and some maintenance issues. However, Cedar Point's legacy is truly a story of trial and error, and Millennium Force was truly that. It was an amazing world-class roller coaster. It did face some issues, but was still amazing and praised by everybody who visited the park. The guests were in shock, but little did they know, just a couple years later, Cedar Point was going to do something even crazier. In 2001, Cedar Point took an off year after Millennium Force, adding a couple little things to the park here and there, but nothing significant. But in the following year came Wicked Twister, another amazing ride from Intamin Amusement Rides. The Intamin Impulse Coaster was a revolutionary roller coaster from Intamin. The coaster featured riders sitting below the track just like Raptor had been, and shot riders forward using linear induction motors up a twisted spike then down backwards and up another twisted spike. The ride experience was called by many to be very intense, very forceful, and thrilling. 
While this ride was never the most popular attraction at Cedar Point, many guests still loved it and it was definitely a fan favorite among a select few. Unfortunately, this ride was demolished in 2021 to make way for a brand new region of Cedar Point focusing on the old boardwalk style attractions of the past and a brand new Grand Pavilion restaurant. And as sad as this coaster's removal is, and as much as it was overshadowed by the amazing other roller coasters at Cedar Point, including Millennium Force, Magnum XL200, this ride was just filler for another amazing roller coaster. And this time, Cedar Point shocked the world as they announced Top Thrill Dragster, showing guests that they were serious about their record breaking business. Top Thrill Dragster shot riders 120 miles an hour into the atmosphere, 420 feet tall. It was the tallest and the fastest roller coaster in the entire world. And while that record was beaten out a couple years later with King Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure, this ride truly showed the world Cedar Point was serious about breaking records. Featuring a dragster car racing theme, this ride was such a popular addition to Cedar Point. Unfortunately though, this ride did not come without its issues. The ride featured a very complicated hydraulic launch system from Intimate Amusement Rides, a system that the manager of Cedar Point would later call one of their biggest mistakes. Because a hydraulic launch is such a complicated launch and uses so many moving parts and hydraulic fluid, catch cars, and etc., there are tens of thousands of sensors, and if one thing goes wrong, the entire ride can be down for the entire day. However, not all of Dragster's finicky nature was perceived as negative. The ride would sometimes fail to clear it over the 420 foot tall hill or top hat, and then would roll back down. This semi-rare occurrence was referred to by enthusiasts as a rollback. The brake fins on the launch track were perfectly capable of handling this occurrence, and it was praised by enthusiasts as it was a fun, thrilling, and forceful experience, and a very rare one at that. It was to the point where many coaster lovers even chanted on the way up that they wanted a rollback and it was such a fun and iconic part of the ride. No matter how many mechanical issues Dragster seemed to have and how many glitches it seemed to have in its system, Cedar Point poured out the money on this amazing attraction. However, in 2021, a very tragic accident occurred while a part of the ride known as a flag plate flew off from the brake run and hit a lady standing in line. The lady was unfortunately hospitalized and is fortunately okay now, and Dragster was shut down immediately after the incident. Being that Cedar Point is a park that cares immensely for the guests and is a very safe park, they decided to close the ride and do a full-on inspection. It is truly safe to say they made the right decision as human lives are the most important thing, much more important than even the biggest roller coasters in the world. This was truly an incident that really hurt Cedar Point and they felt awful that the incident had occurred. The ride was announced recently to have been permanently closed, but that they would do something to further the legacy of Dragster, whether that be to change the launch system, or change another part of the ride, or keep the ride structure as is, or use it for something else. We don't know, it's up to our best guess at this point. However, the biggest thing is that the lady is okay. Dragster is truly a story that seemed absolutely golden, but just quickly fell into ruin and it truly is a tragic tale but cedar point did do the right thing and it just really taught everybody that ride safety is the most important thing of roller coasters the next year after top Thrill dragster not really much was added however cedar point did invest a lot into small park renovations in 2005 max air was added and this was a very popular 68th attraction for the park when it opened manufactured by huss international this was a frisbee model and even flipped riders upside down. It was a very popular ride. And stationed right in front of the park, it definitely received some long lines, especially when it opened. Cedar Point added a brand new ride the next year with Skyhawk in Frontier Town. This was ultimately the ride to recapture a lot of attention to Frontier Town, but it was not for a roller coaster that a lot of people would expect. Many people were expecting Cedar Point to break the newest record of coasters, but that's not what happened. Instead, in 2007, Cedar Point debuted Maverick, an Intamin LSM multi-launch roller coaster. Otherwise referred to as an Intamin Blitz coaster, this ride started up by shooting riders up a 121 foot tall launched lift hill. Then riders would plummet down the drop, bank right, and go through many snappy elements, S-bends, airtime hills, and many extreme maneuvers. The ride was made to imitate a bucking bronco chucking riders from side to side, but it almost did that too much. The ride was set to feature a low-to-the-ground heartline row, but when the CEO of Cedar Point rode the ride before it opened, 
he claimed that the role was too intense for the general public and really left him in pain. Because of the compact nature of this ride and the crazy forces it pulls, the Heartland role was too much for the average rider. So ultimately, Intamin came and removed that and added another S-Bend, for which we have today. Even though this wasn't Cedar Point's tallest attraction, it was definitely one of their most ambitious coasters. And it really was credited to the coaster that ended the coaster wars. Parks were trying to outdo themselves left and right, but Cedar Point proved with Maverick, you don't need the biggest or tallest coaster, you just need a good ride. Which is why so many guests of Cedar Point even prefer this to some of the big giants of Cedar Point like Top Thrill Dragster and Millennium Force. In the middle of the ride, the ride also stops inside of a tunnel and propels riders to a top speed of around 70 miles an hour. Linear Synchronous Motors or LSMs were still a relatively new launch type at this time, but Maverick absolutely mastered the art of them and it was definitely the wildest coaster in the West, and pretty much still continued that theme until Steel Vengeance emerged in 2018, but more on that later. Besides the launches, the Stangle Dive, the S-Bends, the Horseshoe Rolls that give amazing lateral hang time, this ride is also praised for having a gorgeous setting and featuring some nice theming. And because of how short the trains are as they can only hold 12 riders, Cedar Point can run even up to 9 trains on this coaster, but even still, due to how popular this ride is, lines for this coaster can reach up to 3 hours on super crowded days. So it's safe to say Cedar Point's playing it safe, not breaking records definitely paid off for them. The next two years were slower for Cedar Point, developing what was the former children's section into Planet Snoopy as we know it today. Then in 2010, Cedar Point also added some water rides to Frontier Town, including Shoot the Rapids and Frontier Trail. Then Cedar Point diverted its attention to the front of the park, adding Windseeker. Windseeker is a 30-story tall swing ride, and it provided amazing views of the entire park and Lake Erie. It also serves as a beautiful photo op from Hotel Breakers, as you can see this ride right outside your hotel room. While this was just an observation ride technically, it really is now an icon for Cedar Point. 2013 was an amazing year for Cedar Point as they added Gatekeeper, swooping over the park entrance featuring amazing inversions. This ride was an icon instantly. Featuring the world's tallest inversion at 164 feet, Gatekeeper's signature wing over inversion drop instantly became one of the most eye-catching things in all of the park. Swooping over the entrance and Lake Erie, this ride really intimidated the general public and instantly made them ride. It redeveloped a lot of the front of the park and was truly a great business move on the part of Cedar Point, especially flying through the signature keyholes. These were small cutouts inside tall structures in which the coaster would fly through zero G roll and crest into, giving riders the sensation that their arms and legs were going to be chopped off based off of how close the train was to the actual keyhole. While the ride experience was just a B&M wing coaster and did feature some fun inversions, it was a fairly mild ride, but visually it was astonishing. Overall, it was a very solid addition to Cedar Point, really did a lot for their lineup and just really gave guests another amazing high throw roller coaster to run to as soon as the gates opened. Cedar Point was back on a streak of adding new roller coasters as they announced Ruguru in 2015. This ride was a conversion of the old Manda stand-up coaster, and it became a sit-down, floorless roller coaster. The floorless roller coaster really caught the eye of a lot of parks in the nearby area, so Cedar Point decided to do the same exact thing. Guests would walk across a metal floor that would then drop out once the coaster was started to dispatch, leaving the sensation of your legs dangling. The ride was also repainted and then renamed to Rougarou. And while this wasn't the most influential coaster in all of Cedar Point's history, it definitely serves as a nice stepping stone in Cedar Point's line up and is a great overall roller coaster. However, this ride was just a stepping stone for a lot of amazing rides and coasters to come. When you look at Cedar Point's lineup, remember to look at its legacy. Cedar Point really did the impossible of breaking all kinds of crazy records and making the best arguable amusement park in the world. And one of the most influential eras in all of Cedar Point history was 1990 to 2015. Thank you guys so much for watching my part of the Cedar Point documentary, and huge shout out to Theme Park Planet for having me on. It was a truly awesome experience, I really enjoyed getting to work with him, and thank you so much for watching this part of the video. Now farther on we go as we learn even more about Cedar Point's history in the next chapter of the park's amazing legacy. On September 9th, 2015, Cedar Point announced Val Raven. It would be the tallest, fastest, and longest dive coaster when it opened, and we would revamp the Blue Streak and Raptor area. In 2017, on opening day, Top Thrill Dragster would open as the Top Thrill Cubster. 
On the very first turn of the day, it rolled back. Not once, but twice. I was on it when this happened. The next year, an amazing coaster had opened the public. And we had no idea what we were in for. But the next part of the story would require us to go back in time a bit. August 1st, 2016. Zero Point announced that Mean Street would be closing for good. But little did we know what a hyper behemoth they had in store for the 2018 season. On September 16th, Cedar Point held its last rides for the coaster and had a funeral host by someone with the initials RMC. What could this mean? Was this a teaser? A joke? We would soon find out. Soon after construction started, they started not demolishing it, but taking pieces apart. Why was this? Construction was on its way. Soon our theories would be confirmed. The mean streak was getting RMC'd. Finally, after years of begging, on April 1st, Cedar Point would post their first teaser that stated they are coming. Was it an April Fool's prank? Then we got more teasers that stated they're wild and unruly. They're rolling in like thunder. There's a score to settle. And the final teaser stated they stake their claim. What could this mean? Soon we would get answers. On August 16th, 2017, Cedar Point hosted an announcement. They would announce their new record-breaking roller coaster, Steel Vengeance. Tallest, fastest, and longest hyper coaster. This is what enth coaster enthusiasts had been asking for. On April 27th, 2018, Cedar Point held its early riders event, where coaster enthusiasts could ride it early before it opened to the public. Many coaster enthusiasts deemed this as their number one coaster for good reason, and on May 5th it would open to the public. Main Street was one of the worst rides in the park. Nobody seemed to care about it, and barely anybody knew it existed. But thanks to Rocky Mountain Construction, they made it one of the best rides in the world, and they did Mean Streak the justice that it deserved. I remember days where I could walk on Mean Streak and Marathon, and now you can't go on a steel vengeance without waiting at least an hour and a half. Alright, thank you so much everybody who participated in this documentary. It means so much that you all helped out. Just so everybody is aware, nothing much happened at Zero Point since Steel Vengeance, except for the tragic incident that happened with Top Thrill Dragster in 2021, and now Top Thrill Dragster retired. Also, we will be getting an update, an updated boardwalk and a new Wild Mouse Coaster with a new Grand Pavilion. So again, thanks so much for everybody that helped, and now we have the most exciting part of the entire documentary, the credits. <laughs>